Hello, and welcome to the Church of the Giant Flooding Question Mark. Not unlike the supervisor at your last job, the coelacanth is an order of bottom-dwelling, carnivorous ocean fish that grow up to six and a half feet long and weigh up to 200 pounds. But they're not just huge and crazy ugly, they're also one of the most interesting animals in all of biology. People used to think coelacanths were extinct. Imagine if tomorrow scientists discovered that a small herd of adorable triceratops were still alive, living somewhere in the rainforest of South America. Well, trade that genus of dinosaur for an order of lobe-finned fish, and that's pretty much what happened with the coelacanth. Up until the 1930s, scientists only knew about the coelacanth from the fossil record. Everyone thought these fish had been extinct for about 65 million years. But in December 1938, a South African museum curator named Marjorie Courtney Latimer got a call from a fishing fleet manager asking if she wanted to take a look at a selection of fish caught near the mouth of the Kalumna River off the coast of South Africa. When Courtney Latimer examined the haul, she found a strange five-foot-long blue-gray fish with fins that resembled gross, stumpy legs. Together, Courtney Latimer and a nearby chemistry professor and amateur ichthyologist named J.L.B. Smith worked to identify the newly discovered fish and realized that that order of coelacanth had survived, unrecognized, unappreciated, and unloved, into the present day. Today, there are only two known species of coelacanth left alive, the Latimeria minadensis and Latimeria columni. Both get their genus name from Courtney Latimer. Now, no one knows exactly how many specimens of each species are left on Earth, but scientists consider both to be rare and threatened, which is just one reason why you shouldn't eat them. The known coelacanth populations left alive today can usually be found near caves around deep, rocky areas off the coast of volcanic islands. During the daytime, they usually hide inside the caves, and at night they emerge to hunt which they do by passively floating in the water, waiting for favorite snacks like squid and octopus to drift by. So really, it just sounds like me in college. The brain of an adult coelacanth takes up less than 1.5% of its cranial cavity. The other 98.5% of the cavity is literally just full of fat. You can chalk this up to something called negative allometric growth when an organ doesn't grow as fast as the rest of the body. When the coelacanth is young, its brain takes up much more of the cranial cavity. But as the fish grows bigger, the brain doesn't grow proportionally. The skull keeps getting bigger, but the brain stays the same. Poor derpy fish. Unlike any other living fish species, coelacanths have a special intracranial joint that works like a hinge for the anterior portion of their skulls. Together with a muscle underneath the upper jaw known as the basicranial muscle, this hinge helps coelacanth generate a stronger bite force. They also have a unique rostral organ in the nose, which they use as part of their electrosensory system. Very fancy. Have you ever been curious to taste the meat of an endangered ancient animal? Sure, we all have. But let us insist, you do not want to eat a coelacanth. Its meat has been described as slimy, oily, and mucus covered with a foul smell, not unlike the stuff in my college fridge. Even better, coelacanth flesh is full of urea, which is a nitrogen-based compound that your kidneys cleanse from your blood and then you excrete in your pee. Yeah, so it's kind of like eating greasy urine flesh, fish. But it's also full of wax esters, which are molecules of indigestible junk that your body will probably discharge in a flood of unstoppable oily diarrhea. Local fish catchers call it gumbessa, meaning taboo, suggesting there's already cultural knowledge that this guy is not good for eating. So if Captain D's jumps on that irony-based food bandwagon and launches an ad campaign for like a double fried coelacanth taco or whatever, just consider yourself warned. I'm just reeling in some videos. Well, what's your favorite derpy ocean creature? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to learn more, check out how the coelacanth works 
at HowStuffWorks.com.